friends welcome back to our channel i hope you enjoyed your thanksgiving if you do celebrate i know this time of year can be particularly hard so i'm thinking of you all in today's video i'm sharing how we made over our daughter kai's bedroom who just celebrated her fifth birthday we started by clearing out her bedroom including removing all decals which was definitely a family affair bernard then did a lot of prep work because i wanted kai's entire bedroom repainted he chose to spray paint her bedroom which required more prep than usual. My vision for Kaya's bedroom was to create a light and bright space but with pops of color and warmth. So we started with a fresh coat of white paint. This color is Ibis White by HGTV Home by Sharon Williams. If you're interested in Bernard's paint sprayer, it's listed in the description below. The space felt so much lighter already with the white paint and it made me even more excited to continue. Next, we got to work on the first accent wall. I wanted to include some shiplap panels and since I wanted them to cover the existing baseboard, Bernard added a few pieces of half inch plywood. Now the shiplap panels we were using were only about a quarter inch thick, so we added some three quarter inch plywood backing to better secure the panels. I love using this 4x8 shiplap panel because it's so affordable and easily transforms any space. You can purchase these from the Home Depot for about $36 per sheet. I also have it linked in the description below. This is where we began adding pops of color which of course required more paint prepping because Bernard chose to spray paint the panels as well. I love everything about this color. It's called Dromedary Camel by HGTV Home by Sharon Williams. It's such a balanced shade of yellow because it's not too bright or too dark and it pairs really well with a variety of colors. I've listed all the paint colors used including their exact paint code in the description below. Since we already had this paint color out, Bernard switched gears and started on our second accent wall, which was an original color block design. Ooh. 
We're often asked how do we achieve clean, crisp paint lines on our textured walls and it's really a simple technique. Bernard always applies paintable caulk along the tape lines. You'll also want to wipe off the excess. He then paints the wall and immediately removes the tape right after. It's a tried and true method that's yielded great results in our paint projects. To contrast the boldness of the Dromedary Camel paint color, I also included this soft shade of pink called Sachet Sand from HGTV Home by Sharon Williams. And now we're moving back to the first accent wall, which is really a play on texture and dimension. We already have the texture from our walls and the shiplap panels, but now we're adding this smooth vinyl panel to keep the theme going. In creating a cohesive color palette, I chose sachet sand again for the vinyl panel and spray painting was the only way to guarantee a smooth and effortless finish. So the lighting is a bit tricky in Kaya's bedroom and depending on the time of day, there is an added richness to this paneled wall which I really like. With all the painting complete, we pivoted and began working on Kaya's custom twin bed. For this project, we used walnut plywood which is beautiful but expensive at the same time. It cost us about $260 per sheet so we were very meticulous with our measurements and calculations. We started by cutting the plywood down to our specific measurements and I made sure to label each piece to prevent any costly errors. Bernard chose to assemble the bed with pocket screws which required him using a Craig jig to first create the pocket holes. I don't think you can ever have enough clamps because they each have a specific benefit. All the various clamps you'll see in this video are linked in the description below. After he built the bed frame, Bernard then assembled some 2x3s which will support the slat pieces that the mattress will rest on. For the slat pieces, we used 1x4 common boards and passed each one through our planer to smooth out the top side. Bernard also used his router to soften the edges.
To avoid leaving screw holes in Kai's headboard, Bernard used his biscuit joiner to create little grooves in the plywood. He then added glue and a biscuit to each groove to secure the pieces together. A lot of edge banding was involved in this build to clean up those rough sides and give a more professional finish. This was my favorite part of the bed build where we got to bring out the natural beauty of the walnut plywood. We used a product called Rubio Monocoat and like the name suggests, you only need one coat to protect your project. We only applied it to the visible parts of the bed because this product can get pricey. The last project in Kaya's bedroom makeover was building two custom walnut bookshelves. Bernard again used biscuits and glue to secure the plywood pieces with a few pin nails thrown in for good measure. Both bookshelves were also treated with Rubio Monocoat and installed underneath Kai's window as part of her reading nook. All that was left was some finishing details to get us to this reveal. I couldn't be happier with the color palette I chose for Kaya's bedroom and I love that this space can easily transition to grow with her. It's warm, it's calming, and so inviting. Let me know if you'd like to see Kai's reaction to her new space. Her response made it all worth it. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.